Welcome to Capital Hill Mixtape, presented by RIAA. I'm your host, Tom Cleese. My guest today is Congressman Guy Reschenthaler of Pennsylvania. Uh, Congressman, uh, thank you so much for making time for us today. No, thanks. Thanks for having me on, Tom. I really appreciate it, and it's good to see you. Good to see you, too. Uh, Congressman, can you start by just telling us a little bit about yourself and how you got into public service and what you were listening to when you first decided you wanted to get into public service? Well, I always wanted to get into public service, but my goal was always when I was younger was to be in the Navy JAG Corps. And I was fortunate I got into the JAG Corps when I was in law school. Uh, I'm from the Pittsburgh area, Western Pennsylvania. I went to Duquesne for law school right in Pittsburgh. And right after I graduated from law school, I went into the Navy JAG Corps. Uh, what I was listening to back then, uh, it, a lot, uh, I guess. Uh, I, so I like tons of different music and uh, i'm trying to think what back then I, i'm a child of the 90s so 90s music is big um we can talk about music after this if you want but i went i went into the jag corps was fortunate i got deployed to iraq where i was uh, a prosecutor i prosecuted terrorists and then came back to back stateside and i was uh, a defense attorney i defended a navy seal who was falsely accused of allegedly abusing the butcher of Fallujah. And so I went back to Iraq to defend him. And then I was officer in charge of the Texas and Oklahoma area of responsibility for Navy legal, did that for two years, and then came back to Pittsburgh and was a private attorney for about a year and then became a magisterial district judge. So um, I keep going back to what music I was listening to at the time. As a kid, I was really into uh, singer songwriter stuff. I really like Jim Croce. He's a Pennsylvania native. Was really out of Bob Dylan craze when I was in high school, as I'm sure everybody does. Was really into uh, the Counting Crows when I was really young. I was into uh, Hootie and the Blowfish because they were they were the big band back then. Um, I graduated in 01 from high school to give you a perspective. And then when I was in, when I was in Texas, I got real into what I would call South Texas country, right? So Charlie Robeson. Um, I guess you could describe Chris Knight as South Texas country, Corey Morrow, some of the guys that you don't hear in Nashville um, that that are more like Western and not exactly country got into them. And I still listen to those guys uh, now. So that's a ton of incredible experiences and just saying thank you for your service. But if I could just zero in on one thing. So let's go back in time. You start collecting signatures for your signature petitions. You're getting ready for your first campaign. What's a song you were pumping up to when you were getting ready to put yourself out there? For the first campaign, um, well, I remember that there was a Lumineers song and there was a line in it about the, um, the candidate and they're really making fun of the candidate. So not a good example, but I remember that song was playing right around the time where I was decided to run for state Senate or not. Now, whether or not that had a, any bearing, I don't know, but I, I distinctively remember listening to that song making up my mind whether I was going to leave being a district judge and run for state senate or not. Because I had to resign as a district judge to run for state senate. But um, oh, the big parade by the Lumineers, that was, that's the sign I'm thinking of. Do you know what, um, what set of lyrics I'm talking about with a candidate on that song? Actually, I think it would be better if you sang them for us. I'm not going to sing anything, Tom. Nice try. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one of these days. <laughs> but okay. I distinctively uh, remember so. that song. I, uh, being, and that was really popular right around right around that time. So there was no no particular song. But uh, one funny thing, and my chief is probably going to kill me if I say this, we were going door. So I'm really into classical music as well. So is my chief. And we were going door to door with a volunteer and we're listening to classical music. And uh, the guy, go, the other volunteer was like, man, you guys just listen to classical music and go door to door. And we're like, yeah, he goes, man, you guys are something else. Like it was, blew his mind that we would be going door to door for a campaign, trying to get support and have classical music in, in the car as we go from neighborhood to neighborhood. I guess looking back on it and it, saying it now, it is probably kind of weird, but that's just what we were doing at the time. Well, it's really important to find your center in these really chaotic moments of our lives, I suppose. Uh, so now let's fast forward a little bit. You're a freshman representative in Congress. Um, you are a representative in one of the craziest Congresses in recent history. Uh, so you've had plenty of times where cameras are on you for massive historical moments. 
Uh, is there something that you listen to to pump up now uh, to help you get ready for these moments where you're participating in history? Well, Tom, it's kind of funny because I don't, so I'm normally pretty pumped up as I'm sure you can tell. So normally when I'm listening to music, it's to like not be pumped up and to, to calm down a little bit. Okay. That's why I guess I'm so into the singer songwriter stuff. I, I'm really, um, I really like Josh Ritter. I'll listen to him a lot. Uh, I, I Good Man is um, one of my favorite songs. That song, for whatever reason, we played that a lot when I, when I was in Iraq, uh, one of his popular songs. A lot of Ben Harper, Diamonds on the Inside. That always reminds me of uh, Iraq. That was a big song, I guess, that was being played back then. But uh, what songs I listened to before, I've got a Pandora station that I, I like to listen to, and it's a lot of singer-songwriter. It's um, Head in the Heart is on there. Um, Avid Brothers are on there. The Wood Brothers. You, you get the, the genre. It's kind of... Um, I wouldn't say it's slower music, but it's definitely like singer songwriter stuff. So I'll listen to that. And then I'm a big jazz guy. I, I like to have jazz on the background, but more like Coltrane, Miles Davis, Felonious Monk, I'm trying to think of some other. I'm a big uh, Louis Armstrong fan, but I, I like to keep him on a separate mix. I like to have, you know, Col Coltrane and Miles Davis on separate. So I think one time I was talking to you about jazz and you were telling me that you had recently added a vinyl player to. Uh, one of the places that you're at. Uh, is that, are you still working on that? Do you have that thing up and running? So I decided, so it was a little cost prohibitive for me to get it, but I was looking at it. It's right when I moved in here, I was going to get it. We, I had a, um, my dad had a vinyl, had a record player, and I would listen to all the old stuff on it. Uh, a lot of Jim Croce, a lot of Bob Dylan, a lot of Jimmy Buffett, a lot of um, Billy Joel, like your classic rock, right? They were my dad's records that I listened to in high school. I don't know where that record play, player is, and I was going to get one of the new vinyls for my apartment. I just got I just got priced out of it. And frankly, it's a six hundred square foot apartment; those things take up space. But it's on the to do. It's on the to do list. If I get if I hit the lottery, I'll probably get one. Yeah, you'll have to let us know exactly. what your when you get your collection up and running. I, I honestly think I would probably just do straight up like jazz and and uh, what well, have. Hopefully, I would be able to find my dad's old. Uh, records of the classics, um, classic rock that is, but yeah, it would be fun. Absolutely. Well, don't want to take too much of your time, but thank you so much for, for making the time to talk to us about music. Uh, we really love the opportunity to you know, introduce people to who's representing them in Congress. And if we can loop in music any way we can, we will. Um, you have the floor. Is there anything that you wanted to, to let people know that you're working on? Anything you'd like to plug? Well, no, I like working with you and anything, you know, I think a lot of times the uh, writers are overlooked um, in, in the industry and I and um, also the smaller performers, right? So I think that anything we can do to protect them and make sure that the intellectual property is being protected um, and we have, we have a system that incentivizes individuals to get into the industry and to perform and create art, that's a good thing. Um, so protecting that at, at home is important to me, but also abroad. We don't want to have other countries stealing our intellectual property and eating the profits from those that are uh, making this music, either uh, creating it, singing it, you playing it, you name it. I think we really have to protect our intellectual property here in the United States and abroad. And whatever I can do to help you out, let me know. Thank you so much, everybody. Guy Rush and Beller.